Hey, Jessica. Hello. How are you today? I'm wonderful. How are you? So glad that you joined us and we're back for more uncomfortable pet questions. Are you <laughs> ready for this? I'm ready. Are you excited? I'm super excited. <laughs> it's so nice that you do this because I know you guys out there, you know, if you've got some questions about your pet, maybe you don't want to ask your vet, maybe you don't want to ask a neighbor, you can always ask Jessica. Always. She'll answer to you. <laughs> okay, so our first question comes from Annette. Annette, and okay. she is in Albany, New York. Okay. And she's had a little bit of sadness. Um, oh, no. They have a dog and it, it got cancer and they had to remove one of its legs. And the dog is healed up well, seems to be doing okay, but she wants to know what is your advice on caring for and living with a three legged dog? <laughs> well, Annette, um, first I want to say thank you for caring so much for your pet. Um, and know that you're not alone. There are lots of pets out there who are differently abled. They may be missing a limb, they may be missing two limbs, or they could be paralyzed. And I think the key thing with raising a differently abled pet is to not treat them any differently at all. Um, the one thing I will say is that you, you should discuss with your veterinarian options for potential prosthetics, not because your dog is going to act any different. Your dog is going to overcome this so easily. They are going to be doing everything they were doing before. They're going to be running and jumping and they're going to figure out how to get around and get around really well, even, even though they're missing a limb. Um, but because they are missing that limb over time, and it, you know, I don't know how old your dog is, but over time, if you have a young dog especially, the pressure that that missing limb is going to put on the other joints. So for instance, if they're missing their front left, their front right is going to take up a lot of that slack and it could cause some joint issues on down the road immediately no you're going to be fine but i would discuss that with your vet if you have a young dog if you have an older dog then you're probably going to be just fine to let them continue to live their life out and not worry about it at all um, but that is one thing i would say that you do want to check into because um, th there will be some joint issues on down the road just because of, you know, having to put more pressure on their other limbs. But other than that, no, you absolutely should treat your dog the same. They are not going to, they're not going to feel bad for themselves. So there's no reason for you to feel bad for them. <laughs> wow. That's really good advice. And I, I like the way you said, what did, how'd you say it? Differently, Differently abled, abled. <laughs> not disabled. <laughs> Because it is, it's just different. You know, we, we shouldn't consider somebody or something or an animal disabled just because they're different. They're just different. They're That's just all there different. is to it. Yep. Okay, you ready for the next question, Jessica? I'm ready. Okay, this one comes from, looks like your YouTube channel. And guys, if you're not subscribed to Jessica's YouTube channel, go down there now and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on notifications. See, because if you subscribe and you don't turn on notifications, you won't know when she does a video. And this will save you a ton of time. You don't have to go looking for them. We can just kind of tap you on the shoulder and say, hey, you know, we got a new video. And don't forget to hit that like button too. So anyhow, this is from Unique. And okay. she says here, uh, I recently got my dog eight months old. Okay. He has not stopped following me cried when I was in a different room and always growls at people when they are near me. Like he is trying to protect me. I love him, but I get uncomfortable sometimes. What do I do? Well, that's very, very common. In fact, I have a couple different videos on my channel and I tend to get this type of response on one of them. Um, where they're just trying to figure like it was so why my dog is following me type video and i actually created a follow-up video to that so i will link that down below because that is definitely going to be uh help you like step by step what you need to be doing i would say you just got your dog um so you need to give them time to settle in you need to bond with them you need to train with them to help build that communication between the two of you i mean the simple things it doesn't have to be you know elaborate but you do need to give your t dog time to settle in. You need to give them appropriate attention. You need to give them appropriate enrichment. So you need to give them exercise, both mental and physical, and work through this. Your dog is 
very uncertain, I'm sure, because they, they're eight months old and they just got adopted. Who knows how many places they've been bounced around before that? Very uncertain. So we want to provide them with certainty. We want to provide them with stability, with routine, um, with good communication, uh, which is where the training comes in. So, and we also want to, uh, you know, you just got your dog, so I wouldn't jump into, oh my gosh, my dog has separation anxiety. Um, but on down the road, once you start doing all of these things, if you're not seeing significant improvement within a month or two, then we can look at um, potential separation anxiety issues, but that's, you know, just to put that out there that you may want to look at that in the future. But right now, your dog is settling in. So we want to, we want to create routine. We want to create communication using training, positive reinforcement training, and we want to make sure that they're getting plenty of mental and physical enrichment exercise. So um, let's get all of these in place and build a good solid foundation for your dog to become comfortable in the home and then we can reevaluate. Okay, that was awesome advice. I think sometimes we, we jump to the gun when we get a dog and we say, oh my God, the dog's acting this way. It's gonna be acting this way forever. Mm -hmm. When in fact, that could go away once that dog becomes a little bit more comfortable, don't you think? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, that's very cool. Okay, so our next question is from Dolores, Dolores. Wheeler. Okay. Oh, I love this one. I love this one because a <laughs> lot of people have this issue, so stay tuned, guys, because you're gonna wanna hear this one. Okay. How do I get my dog to stop jumping on people. She is rough and more powerful than she looks. It annoys people and me. And they got a frowny face here, as you can see. What do we do, Jessica? Okay, jumping is very common. And Dolores, I completely understand, especially when you have a big dog. The thing is, even with little dogs, people tend to not train the jumping out of dogs because they're so little, but really all dogs do this and all dogs really need this training. Um, first of all, I would say go through my beginner dog training series. I do talk about jumping, um, but there's so much more and I kind of build up as you need to work with things with your dog. So jumping may not be the very first thing you need to work with with your dog. You need to to create communication between the two of you so that you can effectively train. So uh, check the link in the description to the beginner dog training series. Um, but even once you go through that, there are even more videos on my channel about jumping. What we really want to do, so your dog is jumping because they want to see your face. Dogs are incredible at reading our body language and very, very good at reading our facial expressions. So when a dog is greeting someone, they want to see their face. Um, so that's a lot of the reason why dogs jump is because when they're really excited, usually they want to see you, they want to greet you, they're so excited that you're home or whatever is going on. Um, but they also want to see your face and the best way to do that is to jump up to get to your face. Um, so we want to train impulse control. and. So there are a number of different videos on my channel that talk about how to help your dog and train impulse control because we want them to be excited, to be happy that we're home, but we want them to be able to rein that in and be and more, behave more appropriately on, on, which is really our standard, not theirs. Um, so dogs are, Dogs are incredibly social, and that's really the whole basis for jumping. And I, you know, I get it. You, I, I know you understand it too. It just can be a little frustrating sometimes. I would say the best thing you can do is to just start training. It doesn't have to be impulse control training. In fact, I would say don't start impulse control training right up front. We want to start by building a good communication channel between you and your dog, um, which is, again, why I created the Beginner Dog Training Series, which, again, is linked below in the description. I would go through from beginning to end. Don't skip around. I put them in order for a reason. So go through that whole series and work with your dog week by week. Build that communication, and you're going to see drastic improvements and not just jumping but anything else that may be going on between you and your dog that you may find unfavorable because you're building a communication channel between the two of you that hasn't previously existed even dogs and pet parents who they feel like they have a really good relationship with their dog may not have the best communication with them if they haven't done any positive reinforcement training because that's really where that communication comes from you know that um, you know, you ask 
something of your dog and when they do it you provide that reward you're 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 building I mean, the, the best word is communication. You're building really good communication channels that otherwise don't exist because we're different species. We don't speak the same language. Um, even our body language, they're really good at reading ours. We're not good at reading theirs. So we need to, we need to create those channels um, to communicate with our dogs in other ways. So kind of a long story there, but <laughs> I hope that helps an answer your question because there, there is plenty we can do and building communication is the, the foundation of all of that. Awesome, awesome answer. That is so very helpful because I know a lot of people have that same problem. A lot of people. <laughs> yeah, they can take that advice and actually do something about it. Definitely. Well, that's great. Well, we really appreciate you sharing your knowledge and insight today, Jessica. It's Thank just you. so awesome. Now, if people want to get some of their questions answered, and I notice some of these people, their names are up on the screen and everything. They're all famous, I guess, now. They're famous. How can they get their <laughs> questions answered from you? Absolutely. So, post comments on this video go to the com it should be if you're on a desktop or a laptop it should be right down below um, post your comments and that's for questions or anything else you have it doesn't have to pertain exactly to what this I spoke about in this video in fact if you have questions different from what I spoke about in this video that's amazing go ahead and post them below um, and I will get notifications from YouTube that you did that so I can respond to you you can also join the group join the family the link is in the description there are thousands of other pet parents in the group and we're all just waiting for you to join you can share pictures and videos you can ask questions you can help other pet parents if you happen to have some really good advice um, in a certain area when they post questions it's a a really great community of like-minded pet parents and we're all just waiting for you to join so those are going to be the two best ways to get your questions answered now what if they wanted to get more training for their dog how can they get more information from you jessica yeah there's uh two links in the description the first is my ebook and it covers the seven miracle steps what i call the seven miracle steps these are um, the seven canine commandments that you they're the foundations of training that i go over and i put in place in every home that like i go in into and train in a home before we start any other training. So I definitely recommend that for every pet parent and it's incredibly inexpensive and you can just click the link below, get it downloaded to your computer or your iPad, wherever you're using uh, right away and start reading. I also have online video training courses and that is also linked in the description below. So it's the videos that you can watch and implement right away with your dog and it's it builds on the seven canine commandments which is in the ebook so definitely there's there's a ton of information there and it's all available just with the click of a button okay now they should also do what right now they should also give this video a thumbs up make sure to like it hit that like button and subscribe if you look right down there and that subscribe button is red go ahead and click it turn it gray when that happens a bell will appear click the bell select all notifications that way YouTube can notify you every time I post a new video and you don't have to go looking for it and wondering if I posted a new video because YouTube is already going to tell you that it's up so that's the next thing you should be doing all right guys thank you so much for being here with me in this video I really appreciate all of the questions that you submit and all of the views that uh, you're watching the videos that's amazing I really appreciate you being here and do make sure to give this video a thumbs up because that helps YouTube know the kind of videos you like to watch so they can suggest similar things to you I really appreciate each and every one of you for watching and I'll see you in the next video Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.